Welcome to another Workflow Wednesday. As always, I'm Phil Brown. This week, we're going to cover how to make minor post-processor changes so that you don't have to keep hand editing that G-code as it comes out of Fusion or at the controller. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, or if you really do screw something up so bad that it's unchangeable, don't worry. You can use the link down below to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to assist you guys on this. So let's go ahead and get into this and get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just using a file that's open and going to my post. I'm going to go ahead and open up my post processor library. And for the sake of this, I am going to use just a generic FANUC post. And I personally like to copy this over from my library to the local library. So the reason I like to do this is because when I copy this over, this allows me to actually make edits to it before I put it on the cloud for my other users to use. Now, it's up to you how you do this. Again, I don't want somebody to start posting with something that's kind of in between. I like to make sure whatever I put on my cloud for my team is 100%. So now that we have that, we can hit this little pencil here, and this is going to open up our editing. So I highly recommend Visual Studio Code. However, you guys can use HSM Editor. You can use Notepad, whatever you prefer. However, a lot of what I'm going to show you, you're going to need the actual Fusion 360 debugger. So as you can see, all of my stuff is color-coded. If yours is not color-coded, I would recommend you go to your extensions. You go to the Autodesk Fusion Post Processor Utility and go ahead and install this. Now, if you've already got this installed, you're probably getting a warning either up here at the top that you need to trust this installation. So go ahead and trust that and then it should be color coded. Now, the reason why I advise this is so that when you go to the Explorer area, you can see that we have a complete list of different items. And what you're gonna look for is in the case of this is I'm using a milling post. So I'm gonna go to the CNC selector milling and then I'm just going to pull a very generic facing profile. So as you can see, I have now created a debug file off of my post processor. This is going to allow me real-time edits based on what we're doing. So the first couple of things that I always get questions about is people are changing things here in the post properties menu. So you may toggle things on, toggle things off as needed, and they're going to show up blue. Now, if you want something in particular to be default, for example, this use G95, if I go back over to my actual post, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to push Control F and I'm going to type in 95. So what's going to happen is, is this is going to take you through the searching and you're going to see it down here at the bottom. So if I scroll down, we are now looking at the use G95 property. Now you can change these very simply from false to true. And again, this is predictive. Let's make sure that's all lowercase. And upon hitting save, you're going to see what happens. So for example, if you didn't catch it before, and I should have pointed it out, we'll undo it here. All of my G94s have now been changed to G95 based on that property. Now, the next time somebody posts in the post properties menu, this is no longer going to be highlighted blue. It's now a default based on that information. So again, as if I go ahead and change this back to false, again, hitting save, what you're going to notice is we're now back to G94s. Now, keep in mind, this is just some of the simpler properties in default. Let's get into actually changing the values that are being outputted. So for example, here is let's say my machine doesn't use a 94 or 95. I saw this in a Facebook post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click G94. And what you're going to notice is it's going to jump me down to a line of code. Now, you may have to click it a couple of times. But as you're seeing here, as if I expand this out, this is our first take at looking at some code. Well, don't worry. It's very, how to say, dumbed down road out for the computer. Now, there's a lot of things here, and there's a lot of things you're not going to have to worry about. But as you can see, a write block means write the things inside of these brackets. As you're seeing here is we have a G incremental modal command for Format 90. What does that mean? A G90. Write G90. If we look over here on the right, we can see that it wrote a G90, followed by a G feed, and then we're using a property 95 or 94. And what this is all bringing in is when we change the property up above to use 95, it basically says use 94 unless this is a true statement. Now, if I didn't want this in my code at all, what I could do is I could actually highlight this. Keep in mind, you want to take everything from comma to comma. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to hit save. 
Upon hitting save, you're going to see that that 94, 95 is no longer in here. Again, moving down a little further, you can notice we have another G94 in my code. So I would want to make sure that I remove this one also. For most of you, this is a lot of the fixes you're going to have is when you first time post in Fusion, is you're going to have issues where codes are just not needed. Now, if the code needs to be changed, you can change those codes. So for example, if I want to go 15 and 14, I can change those numbers. And as you're going to see now, when it spits that out, it's a G14 versus a G94 or G95. We can change those in real time. And we're going to take a look at that a little bit more here. But again, I want to make sure that I delete things out that I don't need. So in this case, when I hit save, I actually am causing an error. This is another thing why we love to use a debugger. And what you're seeing here now is the debugger has told me we are missing a bracket at line 513. So again, as if just a little examination here, if we go to line 513. You notice how I have one bracket in red? Well, the reason it's telling me we're not fully closed in on that bracket. I did force this error. It's not a big deal. But as you can see, I can go ahead and put that bracket back in. Upon hitting save, it is now fixed. Now, let's look at a little different scenario. Maybe your machine doesn't like T and M on the same line, or it doesn't like certain lines of code on the same line. T and M is the most common one that I always get questions about. However, what you're noticing when I click T1, it's jumping through here. However, it's not taking me to the line of code without clicking a few times. So as you can see now, what we're seeing is we are at right tool block T, which means the letter T, and you can see how they've actually put that. That's a forced T. There's no T format here. But what you're getting is that tool number and then followed by an M6. So what I do for most customers that have this problem is we just copy this line of code. We go ahead and hit enter and we re-enter it. And I like to save it right out the start. Now, what you're seeing here is we're getting a double T and a double M6. So we can now go back and manipulate this code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the M6 and the comma here. Again, I like to do this little by little. So again, by hitting save, you can now see we have just strictly T1. And now if I remove the T kind of statement here, again, what you're noticing is because that actual symbol there, and I don't know the name of that symbol, I apologize guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. We're now getting our T and our M6 on separate lines. Again, this is something very, very handy to be able to do inside of Fusion 360 shift codes around. Now, let's look at another kind of scenario. Let's go down here to our rapid location. So a lot of people, when trying to do their retracts at the end, right, as you're seeing here, we're going X and Y zero, which means we're sending the machine basically back to home. I don't wanna do that on my machine. I would like to just bring it forward in Y. Now, as you're seeing, this line of code is a little more in-depth and it's dealing with properties that you would have to jump all over to find. Well, one good thing here is, is if we actually come in here and we do a slash followed by an asterisk, and then we go down to the bottom line of code here, we're gonna go ahead and now do an asterisk followed by a slash. Helps if you hold the shift key when pushing the letter eight, or the number eight, I should say. And I hit save. Again, now you're seeing is that line of code has been removed. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with a double backslash. And if you're not, a double backslash will actually cancel out just that line. The asterisk with a slash is going to actually cancel out everything between those actual symbols. Now, what I'm going to do is this is where we're going to first write our very first line of code, right? And I am going to keep this super simple. I'm going to say write block because I would like it to write something. I'm going to throw up my brackets. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert my actual symbol. And again, guys, I apologize. I failed terrible at English class. Hence the reason I'm a machinist. But I'm going to do now a forced G28 followed by a G00. And I'm simply going to say Y0. Now, I do at the end of this need to insert a end of block. And we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now what you're going to see is we are now forcing that G28, G00, Y0. Again, this is extremely handy depending on what you're doing and being able to move and position things as you would like. 
Again, if I wanted to change M30 to M99 here, I could go ahead and plug that information in if I was trying to make a sub program post. Again, you do have that ability to toggle things in the properties menu. So as I tell most people is this does have, in the case of this post, the ability to write sub programs automatically. So you may not actually need to do a 30 and a 99. Now, that all being said is we could actually go and look at a few other things here. So one common one that I really do find I get a lot is coolant code, right? So if I go ahead and click M8, and I'm going to click it a couple of times, and you're going to notice that we're coming through here and we're not really getting any of the information I want. However, as you're going to see, we have a set coolant tool coolant, right? And if I highlight tool coolant and I push control F, I can now find all instances of tool coolant. Now, this is considered a function with a command, right? So as you're seeing here, the command is cool it on for tool coolant or tool cool it off, right? So I'm going to actually highlight that command. And again, I could push control F. And what you're noticing is I'm not getting any more information, right? So a lot of times we're doing a lot of control F searches. However, what I can do is if I have an idea of what I want to change and what I'm going for here is through coolant. So by typing in the word through, I can actually search through Fusion 360 and get to the area where these settings are. So as you're seeing, when we start to talk about coolant and different coolant codes and different call outs, I can now change those. Now, if you're looking at your post processor and you know, for example, I need to change M09, right? Another thing I can do is if I type in the number nine, the problem is, is I'm getting a ton of search results. So if I actually turn on a couple of filtering things and I only want to find the number nine, notice how my results have really, really streamlined down. So one thing here is we don't want to change this one. This is an unsupported coolant code. But if I push the down arrow and I just pay a little bit of attention, again, we have some levels here for smoothing. I'm going to eventually get to an area where we're talking about actual coolant codes, right? So again, is that control F to find things is extremely valuable. Now, again, we were talking about wanting to change coolant codes, right? And I'm gonna show you this at the top level. So this is the flood coolant. You set this when you actually set up your tool inside of Fusion. Let's say, for example, on my machine, it's an 18, not an eight. By typing in that number one in front of it, you're seeing that we are now getting an M18. So again, if we wanted to go coolant off at M19, we have that right here again, changing M18 and M19. Through coolant probably is one of my more common changes that I see, and that would be this 88 and 89. Maybe your machine is 91 and 92. Keep in mind, based on this debug file, that tool isn't being spit out with through coolant, so we're not gonna see those changes. Now, the last change I wanna review with you, and this, again, very common I get asked about this, is adding a fourth or a fifth access to a post processor or activating it for that state. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn off these search results and I'm going to type in a access. And I'm going to type that all in as one word. Now, you may have to say B access or C access. And I would recommend when we start to talk about adjusting the accesses of your machine that you do this with machine configuration more than you would do this inside the post processor. And the reason for that is, is you have a lot more control and a lot more ease of use. Now, that being said, I am going to force A and C access motions here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to change this line right here where it says if false, right? We're going to go ahead and change that to true. And I'm going to save that. And what you're going to notice is we're now kicking out our A and C motions, right? Well, now, in the case of my machine, maybe I don't want both A and C. Maybe I want a B, C motion, right? I don't need to change all these variable A accesses to B accesses inside of Fusion in this post case. Some of your posts will actually have that option already there. What I can actually do is my coordinates, 0, 1, and 2 are my X, Y, Z. So I'm going to change this A to 1, and then I'm going to change it from this axis here to 0, and we're going to go 1 here. Now, again, this is B or A, B, C accesses, and this is X, Y, Z coordinates. So what we said is the coordinates is Y axis and the axis is now B because this is the middle one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit save. 
And what you're going to see now is we're spitting out both B and C motion. Now, what if I didn't want both B and C? Well, there's some options that you have here. So what I can do is I could actually remove C from this comment right here. And again, I'm just deleting that and hitting save. And as you can see, the C axis is now removed. Another thing you could attempt to do is like we've talked about is we could do a double slash here and hit save. However, we're causing problems once again because it's trying to call something that is no longer active. So we do have to be careful of the way we do things inside of Fusion based on that. Another thing that we may not want is our variable for use TCP. Again, based on your machine, you may not have that. So let's go ahead and kick on false. Again, hitting save. And to dive a little bit more into how that is actually working is just so you guys know, there's this use TCP callout right here. And what that is doing is using this variable right here to be able to set up. Another couple of things real quick, guys, you can change your range here also. So if you wanted to go full 360, there's also the preferences menu. So this is whether or not you're positive, negative, or it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and put a link down below to a manual on how to change this. It's a very helpful web page for all of you. That said, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And like I've said a couple of times, if you guys need help with your post processor changes, feel free to reach out to me at JITCADCAM. We're more than happy to make these changes for you at any time. That being said, we also have the capabilities to do ground up post builds, conduct training, as well sell you Fusion 360 in itself. So if you would like to support more video content like this, please hit a like, follow, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can buy your Fusion through us, supporting this channel in every way possible. That said, you guys have a great rest of your day.